welcome to Carfoon TV. Uh, this is the first in a series of interviews uh, that we should be doing over the next few months. Uh, I'm here with Alex Osborne today, who's a cracking little up and coming angler. We're going to uh, see how he's attacking the venue, just uh, talk a little bit about how he's, uh, how he's come up in the game. Right, here we are. This is Alex Osborne. He's a very accomplished young angler, aren't you, mate? Well, tries me. We're in, no, the, uh, we're in the next peg up from the uh, sunken boat swim on Elson's at Stanick. Uh, yeah, so, Alex, how did you uh, how did you get to be into carp fishing then, mate? Tell us all about it. Well, mate, I first started um, just best my mum, really. Trying to get it, I was like, Come, we've got to go fishing or somewhere I don't know what I was like when I was young so yeah, you've yeah, known me going know, up yeah. always active wanting to do stuff yeah. got some cheap kit um, went down the river catching the perch and bits and bobs and eventually as I were I got bored so then went down to um, some local little little I was going to say you used to fish the little pits at Rushton didn't yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah Henry yeah. Boot Homes we called them and catching all the tension roach out there and one day I hooked a carp off the top and I was like Jesus Christ yeah I was like that is a serious fish and Good then that fun. was it that was that was a little bit of getting hooked that was where you, where it all started that's, for you that's yeah that's exactly where it started from excellent so uh, so then obviously uh, you upgraded your kit as you went along and yeah got some money together started working my man after uh, through the school holidays yeah. get some kit together and then heard about Static Lakes and um, chipped myself in the deep end. Probably a lot of people know about Elson's Stanic Lakes. Well, no, well, I mean, back in the day when, when we were fishing it, it weren't, it weren't exactly known, was it? I mean, it no. wasn't ever busy. There was sort of a no. hardcore little group of us, weren't there? And uh, there you were, cheeky, chubby face, little. I know, only 14, How old were you? 14, 14 15. Yeah. He used to come round bugging me. Like I say, I was getting a bit of information out of everyone. Yeah, that's it, right. Um, and yeah, that's how it started. Started doing my first nights by myself, and I thought this this was carp fishing, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And it yeah. was like, there was a few named fish in there, some serious beginners, and I did what hell of a lot of time, nearly yeah. for a year and a half before I even caught a carp. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean, which I was watching was, everyone was, else. Which was how it was down here, though, wasn't yeah. it? You know, because yeah. there weren't it wasn't stopped at that point, so, and there was the originals that were here yeah. that were left from uh, Duncan Kay. Yeah. yeah. And then um, yeah, sort of everyone was after those, weren't they? Sort of like if. if I know it's a bit of a term lately, but yeah, they were like the A team of the lake, weren't they? You know? They were, yeah, the old bunker, Swanee, yeah, Spike, yeah. all them fish, and yeah, that was what I was after, you know what I mean? Doing nights by myself, and it was, it was hardcore. It was, it was good hardcore. fun, it was good fun. We had some good times, and again, so you, you kind of learnt your craft along the way, didn't you, from a, from a young age? And yeah. like you say, you were going around, you were picking up little bits of info off each person, yep. sort of uh, doing, your, doing your thing, wouldn't you, mate? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, that's, that's, the, best, that's the best bit. I'd say any advice to anyone starting out fishing or anything like that, go around and pester everyone. Don't annoy them, just get to become friends, get just little tips, little rigs, where they're fishing, what sort of spots they're fishing, why are they fishing there. Yeah, I must admit, I, I the, do remember you used to sit there, didn't you, like in proper eagle eyed, wa watching you, people tie yeah. rigs, and you'd be like, have, have you done that, what you done yeah. that, yeah, do you know what I mean? But that's, that's how you learn, isn't it? Don't, so. don't copy their rigs, just take it on board. You yeah. create something Don't copy yourself. my rigs, eh? Hey? No, yeah. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and then um, obviously that continued for a little while and then yeah. up come the, uh, what was it, the BCAC Juniors, weren't it? Yeah, yeah. fish the Juniors. Yeah. Uh, come out of nowhere, never did hardly any spotting because I was fishing obviously in, in this little lake and it was all margin fishing. So like, what's the spot? All these other lads were chucking these pods like 120 yards, and you I was like, it, I tell you what, I was you, fattened about that big one. Yeah, like, mate, you, you, learned the, you learned the hard way there, didn't you? Yeah. I, yeah, I think you spotted pretty much the whole time you was there, weren't did, you? Just yeah. constant spotting, spotting, spotting the whole time. Like I say, coming from nowhere, won the eliminator, and then I think come what fourth overall. Fourth overall, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean, it was uh, pretty pretty damn it good for a yeah. for a little, little lad from Rushton, you know. Yeah, definitely. So uh, yeah, you did really well. I've like got some pictures of you meeting Herney and that, haven't we? So yeah, yeah, it was yeah. good. So yeah, like you saying. enjoyed that. And then obviously, from that, what happened then, mate? Went down to. Well, I tried to get a syndicate ticket on Rome, didn't I? That's right. Yeah. And because I was only still under sixteen, apparently they couldn't get the insurance or something. So I went other, like elsewhere and went down to Little Urchester. And I think you yes. remember you yeah. come down with me, didn't I you? I remember. Yeah. And uh, well, I was like, oh, I loved it. Loads of lakes, 
40 pounders. I was like, 40 pounders, and yeah. then 40 pounders in here, was it? And that was no no easy water by any manner of means, is Still it? That place. Now, is no, it? that's what I mean. Even even then, it was hard. So, you know, what it's like now, and there's some good anglers down yeah. there, you know. We met the old chap down there, didn't we? Yeah, had we did. a walk around with him. And I was like, hey, it's a massive water, and weren't said, it? And massive. then he said, how old are you? And I was like, 15, 16, I think, oh, I think I was 16 at the time, wasn't I? That's right, and he was like, he was oh, like, hang on. And then yeah. we begged and pleaded, begged and pleaded, and that night he said, yeah, go on then. And he managed to get the insurance going, and that was it. That's it. I was on the right. Chester. Yeah. I was out, weren't I? Loving and it. And there's many anglers that it would love to get on there, do you know what I mean? So you yeah. did really well. You I mean, did really had, well. I had a few fish out there, then I pre baited it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Had the 40 pound common yeah. up the Brisbane Lake, yeah. three peats, 40 pound two. Um, that was my first 40. Yeah, you know what I mean? And that was absolutely brilliant. Never, never Such had a buzz, that before. Yeah. Yeah, like after fishing there, I mean, where else did I go? I went then. I got to go on Roman down yeah. Stanley Lakes, then I like, down there. Right, yeah. And yeah, that was a completely different ball game again. Yeah. You fished. Uh, you fished down St Ives as well, haven't you? You've had a go down there. Yep. Still having a go. Yeah. Still trying as hard as I can. We're mates with uh, Gordy, uh, Gordon, and we so. Yeah, Gordon Els. Yeah. So. Get to fish down there. I mean, that's got some stunning fishes. You know yourself, yeah, I've seen the fat lady, seen, that's yeah. gone, I mean, it's got a lot of replacement fish now. Oh yeah, that, that was always through. the thing, wasn't it? You know, obviously, when the fat lady died, it put a lot of people off, but what they've got to realise is that there's a, you know... Them good, old fish are still good coming fish. through when exactly. they caught. Exactly, exactly, yeah. You know, there's still... That place is so big, there's, you know, there's some real gems to be had in there yeah. still. Yeah, some And when you look fish. at, you know, fishing across the country as a whole, there ain't many places left that have got... There's there's not many places you can go down either, say on a Saturday, and see no other angler anywhere. No, exactly. Anywhere. Exactly. I mean, that's the best bet. You've got 40s, what ain't what, even been caught before in there. That's I'm one I'm 100% sure. No, definitely. There's I mean, that's, that's my next my next feat. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit it's a distance driving for me, you know what I mean? It's like 50 minutes up the road. Effort equals reward, mate. It you does, know, so. but I've, I've had a dodgy car. You probably remember yeah, my old no. Saxo. Yeah, bless it. The yeah. wheel ended up falling off. Then I ended up <laughs> moving jobs. And now I've got a new car and it's like, yeah. it's all slowly turning around, but... Yeah, well, that's it. You've got to work, haven't you, mate, to pay the bills. Uh, yeah, mate, yeah you know, definitely. Obviously, before before this job, you was a bit of a free spirit, weren't you? Fishing four or five days I a week. Was, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. Um, yeah, so... That's right, that's good. It's, um, it's good to have some goals. It's good to have something you, you, you're looking forward to, you know, trying to achieve. And yeah. I think catching anything out of St Ives is an achievement. I've had a tench. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> still, the rigs are working. The rigs yeah. are working. But yeah, so, you know, it's uh, just a matter of time, I think, for you, yeah. mate. You know, like I said, you, you, you've come on, I've watched you come on from a young lad to what you are now, and you, you've really absorbed everything that you've been told. And I mean, yeah, I, tr I try to. Yeah, yeah, but That's it's not like, it's like you just said, though, it's not like you've, uh, you've absorbed it and copied it. You've absorbed it, tried to understand you know why the rigs do this why you're fishing in yes, that area yeah. you know what makes this bit so good and yeah and you and you've come up with your own little thing yeah yeah definitely. and it's obviously worked because i mean like i say roman over the back that that place taught me a lot yeah. about accurate fishing you know what i mean and the fish are so cagey in there sometimes and there's a lot of good fish in there well there's guys I that mean, do seasons on there and don't even get a run in there yeah so, yeah definitely yeah, yeah. i mean i've caught when i was on there i caught most of the 30s out there bar one which was the one I did want, which was the look. It's the, typical, uh, isn't it? Ghost, yeah. <laughs> it's typical, isn't it? I mean, that went 40 pounds. No one would believe it went 40 pounds, but it did. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I would go back on there, but I've got new goals. Exactly, yeah. This, you've done a bit there. You want to move yeah. on. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, I've done recaptures of the 30s and stuff. I mean, it's that, you know what I mean? It's it's, it's getting a bit stale then, yeah. isn't it? You need to move on and sort yeah. of, uh, re you, you become a bit stale, I suppose. You it, do, yeah. When you start recapturing the same fish again. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, fair play to you, mate. So that's the goals then for the future is to uh, have a crack down St Ives, and uh, yeah, I know you've got a few other little ventures. Yeah, in, I've got uh, a few, few other start. places lined up. Yeah, yeah. We was talking about that. So if, uh, if you get that, I think uh, now I've got my my job all sorted out now, and everything's yeah. all settled. Yeah, that's it. You know what I mean? And it's now get my head back on fishing. Last year I was a bit out of it. Yeah, discovered but, drink and stuff, didn't you? As you do, as you do, you know what it's Drinking like. women. Yeah, beautiful, can't beat that. Yeah, um, too but no, now, now I'm back on the game like properly and yeah. I'm going to get my hat, like, head into some 
proper places. Brilliant. Okay then, mate. Right, well, uh, we're going to move on to have a look at some of Alex's rigs that he uses now. And, uh, and yeah, he's just going to talk us through them. And also, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, the bait firm that's, that's sponsoring him at the moment, which is Bang On Baits. Right, I'll see. I'll explain the sort of place I'm fishing at the moment. Um, it's about six foot, five foot deep, uh, really weedy. Um, I've chose this bit of the lake because it's quite it's a little bit of a deeper bit, a bit weedy, and there's some beautiful silk spots out in front. I mean, this time of year, it's getting later on in the year, getting cold, and they tend to, they tend to sit in the silt. Um, so I sat here, I put a little scatter in the boiler out, and a little dust in the pellet. I mean, what I've done is I've washed out the boilers before I've even come because it's a heavily day ticket, like pressure venue. So I wash them out so they're nice and light, so they're a bit less wary. I mean, the bait I'm fishing is, um, I've had a little tinker to it, it's DSM from Bang on Baits. I mean, I'm lucky enough to be a consultant for them. Um, I mean, this is, this is how they sort of look. We'll take a steal of them later so you can have a good look at them later. I mean, all they have is a fish meal based bait, loads of pre-digested fish meals, I mean, what I've done is I found the soup spot out in front. It's about six foot deep and it goes down to about six and a half, and it's really, really like plugs in. It almost feels like you're in weed when you pull back, but it's not. <coughs> the rig I'm chucking in it because if you put a bolt rig into it, I mean, what it do is it bury in it and it, lo it looks awful. I mean, you chuck it in the edge, and I've seen how it works a bolt rig sometimes. When it's like deep silt, like I say, it don't look great. So what I'm using it's. You've probably seen it before, it's a hinge stiff rig. I mean, all we've got, I've got a little two, two and a half ounce lead, and then I've got about two and a half foot lead core, and then all I've got is a bit of 20 pound black silk, um, coated hook link, and then a bit of mouth trap, and a stiff rigger hook. I mean, what it does is the lead goes boom, straight into the silk, what happens is this part of the hook link can ride up and sit lovely on top of the silt and then this little white pop-up looks like a little white washed out boiling will just sit perfectly on top of the silt and I mean the idea around this is what I always think is get this pop-up to sink as slow as you can get it I mean sit there on the edge if you're doing it for 10 minutes do it for 10 minutes because I think that's what that's what makes the bites when they're being a bit finicky so I mean yeah that's the rig I mean, it's been absolutely wicked for me this year. I never used to fish a great deal of pop-ups, but this year, like going on to bang on their pop-ups are absolutely, they're the don. And um, like I say, I've, I've had loads of fish over them this year. So, I mean, it's a good rig. I mean, try it, see how you get on, adapt it, have a little twist yourself, see what you think. Um, and I mean, that seems we're doing the business. tip for you. You know you turn up to day ticket lakes and you see everyone they get the throwing stick out don't they with a the boilie and they put the throwing, throwing the, the uh, boilies out everywhere and the seagulls are just absolutely annihilating them. I mean I don't think it does any good for your swim um, I mean you get fat seagulls at the end of it it's not good is it. I mean, my little tip I mean I don't fish over a lot of spot and stuff on this lake. I mean all I'm going to do is a few boilies in there. I mean, it's a little mini spawn I'm using. Literally a few pellets. You just stick it in. I mean, with a little spawn, you're literally only getting the dust in over your spot. I mean, it's not stupid amounts. It's nice and stealth because it's so small. I mean, all it does is goes over the top and it clicks in. I mean, I'll, I'll show you. I'm only fishing about 40 yards range. Seagulls are none the wiser. Right, so there's a couple of tips and a little bit about Alex's rigs there. I um, hope that was useful to you. Um, yeah, basically you, you're lucky enough to be uh, sponsored by Bang On, aren't you? So Bang On Baits. Um, they've got uh, obviously a few boilers in the range now. There's some uh, there's some nice baits in there. I've seen them DSM, myself. DSM, yeah. CNL. Yeah. Absolutely. We're coming up for some through the winter as well. We've got some awesome stuff on the way. Yeah. 
you got yeah. They're still doing the Mil Caminos and stuff like that. We're doing a slight little twist on it. Uh, I mean, we've got <coughs> we've got all the pop-ups and we've got all the wafts arranged. Yeah. Um, and you know yourself, they're absolutely. I was going to say um, when we was at the uh, we was doing a social down at Sandhurst and uh, yeah, the, the wafters. We went again, didn't we? Smashed it. Went again this year, and I, I was lucky enough to have a thirty pound. 30 pound two ounce common and Niger's fish at 34 and a half. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, now was on the wafters again. All on the wafters again, yeah. so yeah. So yeah, like I say, you're, you're lucky enough to be uh, sponsored by them, which is, uh, you know, great for you. And uh, hopefully, you know, other, other things are going to come your way in the future. I know you've done you've done a few articles. Uh, in, was it Carp yeah. Talk, is it? Uh, I've done Crafty Carper. Yeah. Uh, I've done a f five in them, I think. Yeah. Uh, I've done a few bits and bobs. You know some mean? seminars and stuff like that. Yeah, haven't you? yeah. yeah. So a talking man. So uh, hopefully, uh, you know, the future's bright for you. You know. Hopefully. Just got to keep bagging them fishing. Yeah. So okay. that this is the thing. You know, you hear a lot of uh, sort of young and up and coming anglers, and, and you know, they want to they want to get on. They want to get into the business. And obviously, you're you're just cracking it. And you, like you say, you're doing a few articles and bits and pieces. What what would you sort of say to these sort of young lads? You know, like you remember, like when you were a chubby little lad running around yeah. harassing everyone. Yeah. Uh, you know, what what would you say to these kids? You know, if they really want to get serious about the carping and get right involved with it, what what would your advice be? Your advice, my advice, would be you've got to be passionate. Everything I've never asked for no, nothing to be given to me. Yeah, I've never asked for sponsorships. I've only ever been passionate about fishing. I go fishing because I love it. I, it wouldn't matter if there was nothing else. If I had to pay for absolutely everything, I'd still do it because I love it. I mean, it's, it's just being passionate, showing people to be passionate. Um, and it, it, it tends to like follow just, you. Just it comes with it, basically. The, mo the more focused you are, the more yeah. you know, determined you are just to, to enjoy your sport. Yeah. You, you, Things and get noticed, don't they? they do you know certainly, what I mean? Yeah, they certainly do. And I mean, if you're going around some some good lakes around the country, and you start having good fish out there because you are passionate and you're willing to go that extra mile for that fish, people see that. Yeah, yeah. They know you're 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 serious. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I've never asked for nothing, and it's just lucky enough I've but like bumped into some half shark people, and they've seen my passion for fishing. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. hopefully that shine through, and that's. So basically, yeah, you know, to, to sort of sum it up, is basically enjoy your sport if that's what you do and that's what you enjoy. Just get on with it and, and just give it your all, and and it sort of comes it comes with it. You know, if 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 you do start doing well and catching some nice fish and getting yeah. on some nice venues, publicise them. Yeah, that's it. Get them in the magazines and and just you know sit back and wait at the end of the day it should be about you enjoying your sport so yeah that's you know that's a good point that's so, the main thing yeah if you're not enjoying it then there's no point but yeah just just get your head down and get on with it really yeah um, don't go looking for it it will find you yeah it will find you if you're yeah. trying and trying and trying to, to push yourself in the magazines and push this and your fishing will suffer yeah. get that fishing sorted there you go and that's from the man himself the man himself <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs>to see Phil uh, just he's gonna just talk to us about the lakes and uh, the facilities they've got here and uh, yeah basically just run us through what each of the, the lakes on the complex are about so over to you Philip yeah well we've got six lakes on the complex uh, starting off with Elson's which is our sort of premier specimen water yeah so tell um, us a little bit about Elson's because obviously Elson's it's about six acres yeah uh, we allow it to a dozen people on it and uh, it's got minimum six fish over 30s, four of which are commons. Uh, the biggest fish so far this year has been 38, 15, I think. Yeah. So there's some nice fish in There's it. some good fish, yeah. And you're regularly yeah. sort of putting in smaller fish that are yeah, coming up. Yeah, coming up uh, and, uh, every year or two. Depends on what we get, and uh, we'll put a few in it. That's right, because you've actually Just got a, a netting service that you run we do. as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. so yeah. 
Yeah, you obviously get a lot of fish from that, don't you? Yeah, we can do. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, onto mallard. Mallard, um, a lot more fish in that. Um, you got probably over 300 carp in there. Yeah. Uh, it can be hard, but also can be a bit of a you run can have water a prolific, as well. You know, yeah, proper you red layer down there, can't you? Sometimes, um, yeah. The average size, I suppose, is around 12 to about 20, but there is quite a few over 20. Yeah. Um, and we've had a minimum of two different 30s out of it okay. so far. And then swan. Swan. That's more of our runs water. Yeah. Uh, the average size in there is probably about 8 to 16. Yeah. But again, there's a big, big head in there, isn't it? A big, big head of carp. Oh yes, in there. Yeah. yeah. You'd so. be looking at six, seven hundred fish, I should think, in there. And then you've got your two smaller lakes, which is yeah. Car Park and Coot. Car Park Lake. Um, you're looking at smaller fish, really. Although we've had a 21 pounder out of it this year. Uh, the average in there is about. Oh, no, two and a half to eight pound. It's a, it's a it's a cracking little water, you know. If you if you're just sort of breaking your kids in and whatever, or you just want to get a couple of hours fun, like a bit of fishing in the afternoon or whatever, it's, it's yeah, ideal, ideal for that. For that. Like, Plenty yeah. of small silver fish. Yeah, you can have well. a right good down there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Coop Lake, um, they're a bit di bit bigger in there. Yeah. Uh, probably four to about eight pound average, but there is double figure fish as well. And there's plenty of variety. Yeah, as well, there's, there's ten. There's, there's bream, um, some cracking uh, bream in there as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just you've just recently. Is that uh, March we stocked the bream. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, and then of course you got your your syndicate lake, which is uh, Roman, which is an yeah, amazing it's coming one, on well. It? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, you know yeah. if you think back to when we uh, put fish in there years and years ago. That's right, you were there yeah, when we put when you were stocking them in, and that's how they've grown. It's yeah, absolutely amazing. Well, well, some of them, one of the fish that we put in when you was there was. I think went in at 21 and is now right. 43. So. Crazy, absolutely crazy. But the, yeah. every single water here is absolutely crystal clear, isn't it? Yes, generally. Um, the Car Park Lake and Swan hold a bit more colour, but the others are quite clear. And they're just yeah. absolutely alive, aren't they, with, with natural oh, food? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, so it's, it's uh, well matured. Mm, very much so, yeah. So, day, uh, day ticket prices, what's the, what's the um, price? Day ticket places on um, all of them except for Elson's is. Six pound a day adults, and then it's two pound per extra rod. Okay, so, so that's, eight for so two, so that's two rods for three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, night fishing adults is eighteen pound, and that's up to three rods. Juniors and OAP is five pound, and you can fish two rods for the day. Yeah. And night fishing is ten pound for up to three rods. Excellent. Elson's is a little bit different because uh, that's, that's, that's on a pre-bookable. Yeah day ticket. Yeah, the other so thing have, is you must ring in on that because it it does get it, it gets packed. I mean obviously the swims are nicely spaced, everybody's got their own water, but you need to book. You must, we you only must allow book. a dozen on it. Yeah. And uh, there's probably 16, 17 swims, but we just keep it to a dozen. Yeah. Okay. Um that's twelve pound a day up to three rods and twenty one pound for twenty four hours for yeah. three rods as well. Okay. There's no concessions on that one. It's yeah. the only one you can't get no, There's ample parking as well. There's a big car park up the top end to access uh, Swan, Mallard and Coop. Uh, and then you've got the lower car park just outside the hut here. And you can walk around to the bottom half of Elson's up from here. It's, uh, it is, uh, so it's definitely a barrow job, isn't it? If you go along really, the far yeah. side of Elson's or yeah. Mallard. But um, uh, if you're not in a rush. It's, it's an absolutely it's gorgeous not a million place. Miles, it's not really flat, really. That's what I mean. It's not, you know, it's not sort of a, a proper trek. But yeah, like I say, it's a lovely complex, and you're in no rush when you're down here anyway. So, uh, yeah, and then you've got the the lodge that we're sat in now, and uh, you do a bit of tackle and stuff. Yeah, here, it's mostly aimed at bait, um, but we do things you might forget, you know, batteries, things that run out, you know, PVA, and then a few uh, leads and. Um, pop-ups and different things like yeah. that, gas. Yeah. You know, not massive amounts, but... But just those yeah. those few bits yeah. that you're likely to either Do a fair bit or, on the bait. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. it's mainly your bait, which is um, this, uh, what do you, is SLF? Yeah, Stanley Lake Fisheries. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. We do three different types in that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and uh, obviously you'll, you'll see some of the pictures. We'll put some pictures up at the end and uh, all the details of the website. And uh, you've got a Facebook page as well, yeah? Um, yes, I think we have. I know you're not the techie, are you? I'm not. No, <laughs> no I'm sure we have. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, yeah, any any information you want, uh, it'll all be on there. And likewise, if you if you need any further information, you can't get it, then um, 
you can always give uh, Phil a tinkle. Yeah, yeah, no problem. on 24 7, so day yeah. and night, he's always there. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Phil. All right, cheers, mate. Thank you. Now that brings us to the end of uh, our first of our series of interviews. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, as I say, we're going to put up the uh, information about Stanic Lakes. You must check this place out. Crafty Carping Forum do our social here just about every year now for the past three, three, four years now. So, and uh, we've got no intentions of going anywhere else. It's an absolutely cracking place. So check it out. Hope you enjoyed watching. See you again next time.